Difference equations provide a useful and insightful way to describe the behavior of linear time invariant systems. In particular, difference equations allow systems that have some stored energy to be analyzed. Recall that we can define an nth order difference equation as the sum from k equals 0 to n of coefficients a k times y at times n minus k, where y is the output, is equal to the sum from k equals 0 to m of coefficients b k times the input x at times n minus k. And here we assume for convenience that a0 is normalized to be equal to 1. Now we have discussed how to solve this system in a computational way, in other words recursively compute the output given the input and a set of initial conditions. Now these initial conditions represent any stored energy in the system. What they tell us is the entire effect of all past activity on the system. In other words, I don't need to know what happened to the system in the past if I know these initial conditions. And we can look at this from a computational standpoint. If I have these initial conditions and the input for some time greater than zero, then I can find the output for times greater than zero by just solving for y of n in terms of the past values and past values of the input. While difference equations are used primarily in signal processing for computing the outputs of linear time invariant systems used as filters, an analytical solution to this difference equation gives us a lot of insight into the nature of the system characteristics and what the key properties of the system are that determine its response. So in order to derive our approach for solving this difference equation analytically, we're going to use the property of linearity, since this is a linear time invariant system. And we're going to write the output as a sum of two terms. First of all, we're going to look at a steady state response. That is, how the system behaves if the input has been on forever. In effect, there's no stored energy. Then we're going to add in a transient response, which is a term that tells us how the system transitions from its initial condition to the steady state condition that we've already described. So let's start with the steady state response. For our analysis here, we're going to consider inputs expressed as sums of complex exponentials. In other words, I'm going to assume my input can take the form c1, z1 to the n, plus c2, z2 to the n, and I could have more terms here as well, where z1 and z2 are complex numbers. Now, by allowing z1 and z2 to be arbitrary complex numbers, we can describe a wide variety of signals. For example, we can describe exponentially damped sinusoids, sinusoids, constants, and so on. So since the system is linear, we don't have to consider all the terms at once. We'll just consider one at a time. And I'm going to assume that I have an input of the form z to the n. Well, it turns out, and we'll verify this in a moment, that the steady state response to this input is h of z times z to the n. And h of z is a constant that depends on the value of z. Now to verify this, I'm going to ask the question whether this input and output satisfy the difference equation. So if we look at the difference equation and we observe that x of n minus k is just z to the minus k times z to the n, because x of n is z to the n, and y s of n minus k is h of z times z to the minus k times z to the n. So if I substitute y s of n minus k into this expression and x of n minus k, then we get the equation that's shown at the bottom we can satisfy this equation exactly for a particular choice of h of z. Now notice that z to the n I have on both sides, so that's going to go away. And h of z doesn't depend on k, so I can bring that outside of the sum. And I find that h of z is the sum from k equals 0 to m bk z to the minus k divided by the sum from k equals 0 to n ak z to the minus k. Now this is actually a pretty important characterization of the system. h of z is known as the system function. So let's take an example of computing a steady state response. 
And I'm going to assume that I have a difference equation described by y sub s of n minus 1 third y sub s of n minus 1 is equal to 2x of n minus x of n minus 1. And I want to compute the steady state response of this system represented by this difference equation if my input is negative 1 half to the n. This is of the form z to the n if I let z be equal to negative 1 half. So if I solve for h of z in terms of these coefficients in the numerator, I have 2 minus 1 times z inverse. And then in the denominator, I have 1, which is the coefficient of the y of n term, minus 1 third z inverse h of minus 1 half, when I evaluate it for this particular input, when z is equal to minus 1 half, I get 2 plus 2 divided by 1 plus 2 thirds, and that comes out to 12 fifths. My steady state response for an input of the form negative 1 half to the n is going to be 12 fifths times negative 1 half to the n. And you see that the output is of the same general form as the input under these steady state conditions. So now let's look at the transient response. Remember we said we were going to use linearity to write the total output as the sum of the steady state response plus a transient term. Now since the steady state response satisfies the differential equation for a particular x of n, the transient response has to satisfy the differential equation for an input being zero. In other words, with the steady state response, we've already taken into account the effect of the right-hand side of the difference equation. So when we solve for the transient response, we're going to have to set this term equal to zero so that when I sum them, I get a valid solution. We can write this as a sum from k equals zero to n, ak, yt of n minus k must be equal to zero. This equation, you can show, has a particular form for the solution and that is yt of n can be expressed as a sum from 1 to capital N, the order of the system, some constants c sub l times some numbers d sub l raised to the nth power. These d sub l turns out are the roots of the system's characteristic equation which is defined to be the sum from k equals 0 to capital N of a k z to the minus k equals 0. So I find the values of z that are the roots of this equation. Those are my d sub l, and they go in this solution. Now you can verify that a particular solution d to the n satisfies this form of the difference equation with the input equal to 0 by just substituting in. Suppose I replace yt of n minus k with d raised to the n minus k and then I end up pulling out a term involving n, since that doesn't depend on the summation index k, I get d to the n times the sum from k equals 0 to n minus 1, a k d to the minus k. Well, since d is a root of this particular equation, then the second term is exactly 0, and indeed I've verified that a term d raised to the nth power will satisfy this equation, and since we have an nth order polynomial here in z inverse, we know that there are capital N roots, and thus our transient solution in general can have N different terms, one for each of the roots. Now these constants out front, we're going to find those later in order to solve the overall system and match the particular initial conditions. And one other catch here is that this particular form of the solution assumes that the roots of this characteristic equation are not repeated. In other words, each root is unique. Now, there's a couple observations that are worth making here. These roots, these d sub l, that characterize the transient response, it turns out they are the roots of the denominator polynomial in the system function. And if you study Z transforms, these roots are called the poles of the system. Also, sometimes people find it awkward to work in terms of polynomials with powers of Z inverse. Well, you can multiply both sides of this equation by Z to the N. N is the order of the system. And in that case, I can rewrite my polynomial as a sum from K equals 0 to N, AK, Z of capital N minus K. In this case, we have a polynomial with positive powers of z, and that's a little more conventional for us to find the roots of that. So if you're more comfortable working that way, 
by all means write it in terms of positive powers of z. So let's find the transient response of the same system that we looked at a moment ago when we found the steady state response. And our transient response has to satisfy yt of n minus one third yt of n minus one equals zero. Because our steady state response has already taken care of the input, so we can't add anything to that. And we know from our previous slide that the form of our solution here, the order is one. So there's only going to be one term. We'll call that c times d to the n. And d is a root of the characteristic equation, 1 minus 1 third z inverse equals 0. Well, you can multiply through by z here on both sides and write this in the form z minus 1 third equals 0. And you can immediately see that the root is 1 third. Our transient response takes the form some constant times 1 third raised to the n. Now this constant is going to be chosen so that our overall solution satisfies the initial conditions. And there's a little catch that's kind of annoying, but we have to deal with it regarding the initial conditions. And since our solution here is only valid for times n greater than zero, and I'm assuming that our initial conditions are up to time negative one, we have to translate those initial conditions into a regime where the solution is applicable. So that means we have to move them forward, and we do this by computing these new initial conditions from times 0 to capital N minus 1. And then we use these initial conditions to solve for the constant. We'll compute these just by writing the difference equation in the recursive form and plugging in these values and the input to get our new values. Let's continue this example where we had this difference equation, y of n minus 1 third y of n minus 1 is 2 of x of n minus x of n minus 1. We assume that the input was negative 1 half to the n u of n. We'll have an initial condition of y at minus 1 being equal to minus 6. Well, I found the solution, my steady state solution was 12 fifths times negative 1 half to the n. And my transient solution was c times 1 third to the n. And these applied for times n greater than or equal to zero. So we're now going to find the constant that goes in here using this initial condition. And to do that, we first are going to translate the initial condition forward to a time at which the solution is applicable. And we'll just rewrite the difference equation up here in a recursive form by moving the negative one third y of n minus one term to the other side. And then when I evaluate that n equals 0, I see that y of 0 has to be 1 third y of minus 1 plus 2 x of 0 minus x of minus 1. We can substitute our value for the initial condition and our value for x at time 0. x of minus 1 is, is 0 because the input didn't start till time 0. And in this case, we have 1 third times negative 6 plus 2 times 1, and you do the minus zero and you get exactly zero. So we're going to solve for c now. We require our solution y of n at time zero to be zero. So zero has to be equal to 12 fifths times negative one half evaluated at n equals zero plus c times one third at n equals zero. These of course both go to one here and this also goes to one. And so for c has to be negative 12 fifths for this equation to be true. And that gives us our final solution to the difference equation, which says that the output y of n is the steady state response 12 fifths times negative 1 half to the n minus 12 fifths times 1 third to the n u of n.